The season three of Jujutsu Kaisen will begin by adapting the Itadori execution arc, which starts with an explanation of the overwhelming chaos that befell Japan after the activation of the ritual by the false ghetto. About 23 cities were reduced to ruins, and the number of cursed spirits released surpasses the 10 million mark. Additionally, the sorcerers face the challenge of dealing with these spirits while evacuating nearly 5 million inhabitants who are still unaware of the existence of cursed spirits. The streets of Japan were completely empty, and in one of the many abandoned shops, a little girl sat on the floor eating from a plate when suddenly, a curse emerged at the shop's door and begins to call the girl who asked for her mother. And then she began to walk towards the curse. When she exited the shop, the curse removed the body it was using as bait and attacked the girl. However, at that moment, Yuta appeared and dispelled the curse. He smiled to reassure the girl and asked about her parents. The girl didn't know what to say, so Yuta bent down to comfort her, unaware that the curse was preparing to attack again behind him. However, before the curse could touch him, it was eliminated by Rika. The curse that always accompanies Yuta and while covering the girl's eyes, Yuta to ask Rika not to be too bloodthirsty, and after fulfilling the mission, Yuta introduces himself to the leaders of the Sorcerer's HQ, who congratulate him on his work. The elders tell Yuta that no matter how many cursed spirits he eliminates, they don't trust him to carry out the most important mission. However, Yuta countered, saying that they should trust him, as it doesn't matter if he's a student of Master Gojo. He cut off Inamaki's arm when Tsukuna took control, so he will kill Yuji Itadori without hesitation. Next, it was revealed that the Sorcerer headquarters had made four important decisions after the incident in Shibuya. The first was that Geto had survived and was once again sentenced to death. The second decision is that Gojo has been deemed an accomplice to the Shibuya incident and will be permanently exiled from the sorcerer world. Anyone attempting to remove the seal of the prison realm will be considered a criminal. The third decision is that Masamichi Yaga will receive the death penalty for inciting Gojo and Geto to provoke the Shibuya incident. The fourth decision is the suspension of Yuji Itadori's death penalty has been revoked and his execution is to be carried out immediately, with the special grade sorcerer Yuta being responsible for carrying out this mission. After that, the scene shifts completely to a happening in the house of one of the major sorcerer families, the Zenin clan. Naoya, a special grade first grade sorcerer, arrives late for a meeting with various members of the clan. Ogi and Jinichi Zenin and admonish him for being late, especially now that their father, Nabito Zenin, is dying. Naoya apologizes but says that deep down he doesn't care, because at the end of the day, the next leader of the clan will be him. Naoya asserts that all his siblings are useless, and his uncle Ogi, despite being his father's younger brother, is not up to the task, while Jinichi is worthless. Upon hearing this, Jinichi Nichi attacks Naoya, but he effortlessly dodges. Their fight is interrupted by a gentleman who informs him that Nabito Zenin has just died and left him in charge of his will. He says that, according to his master's wishes, he will read the will in the presence of Ogi, Jinichi, and Naoya. The man begins to read the will and says that the 27th leader of the Zenin clan will be Naoya, and that he will be able to use all of Nabito's possessions, including the cursed tools stored in the institution's warehouses. Naoya smiles in satisfaction, but the man continues reading the will and says that, in the event of Gojo's death or loss of mental capacity, the oath with Toe Oji Fushiguro will be terminated. Then Megumi will rejoin the Zenin family and become the clan leader, inheriting all of Nabito's possessions. Upon hearing these words, Naoya opens his eyes wide in surprise and immediately asks about Megumi and is told that the only thing that is known about him is that he is in Tokyo on a mission to look for Itadori. Faced with this news, Naoya leaves the room and asks for the superiors to be informed that he will kill Sukuna. Naoya plans to reunite Itadori and Megumi and eliminate them at the same time. If he manages to eliminate Megumi, he will have no more worries and become the leader of the Zenin clan. Next, the scene shifts to Itadori, who continues to hide after the incident in Shibuya. Choso appears by his side and asks about his injuries, while saying his thoughts that Itadori's power is growing, probably because of Sukuna. Choso advises Itadori to return to Jujutsu school, but Itadori replies that he can't, because he doesn't know what Sukuna's plans are or what he intends to do with Megumi. Moreover, Itadori is also tormented by the fact that he has killed so many people in Shibuya and is afraid to do so again. Itadori asks Choso if he's not angry for losing his brothers because of him, and Choso responds that he's not because it was an accident. He explains that it's not about forgiving or not, because that's what it means to be brothers. But Itadori ignored Choso and said that they needed to leave to continue exercising curses, so they continued on their way, unaware that they were being hunted by Yuta and Naoya. Itadori went to the middle of an abandoned city, and as soon as he started clapping to attract the attention of the curses, they immediately appeared behind him, and he started running at high speed, throwing the curses into a tunnel where Choso uses piercing blood technique to eliminate almost all of the curses. Only one of them managed to escape the surprise attack, but it was soon eliminated by an incredible punch from Itadori. When Choso saw Itadori, Itadori's attack, he thought to himself that he already knew Itadori was strong. But now, seeing him easily control his cursed energy, he views him as a demon god. After that, Choso praised Itadori and called him a younger brother. But Itadori asked him not to call him that. However, Choso exclaimed that he would continue to call him that to remind him that his father also had points on his forehead. And at that moment, the conversation between Itadori and Choso is interrupted by Naoya. He inquires about Megumi and then questions Itadori if he has no intention to flee. Itadori becomes confused, and then Naoya explains that now that Gojo is gone, Itadori's 
death penalty is back in effect. Naya also exclaims that he's after Megumi and doesn't care if Itadori lives or dies, but he can't let him walk away peacefully, so he's going to break his legs. Hearing this, Itadori angrily asks what he wants with Megumi, and Naya replies that he wants to kill him. However, before that, Megumi needs to write a few things, and without further ado, Naya moves swiftly and appears next to Chozo and Itadori, attacking them. Itadori can't dodge the blow, but Chozo stops Naya to give his teammate the chance to attack. However, Naya disappears again when the sorcerers strike and decides to counterattack even faster to eliminate both of them at once. But upon sensing an overwhelming amount of cursed energy, everyone is paralyzed. Yutsu appears behind them and asks who is with Itadori. Naya recognizes him and asks if he is Okotsu, stating that he is on his side. When he heard Naya Itadori's words, he realized that the person who had arrived was Yuta Okotsu, a special grade sorcerer just like Gojo. Choso warns Itadori to be careful with Yuta, as facing him will surely result in death, and so, they decide to run and meet in a place they both know. And meanwhile, Naya and Yuta become allies and decide that Naya will deal with Choso while Yuta takes care of Itadori. Itadori runs at full speed, but Yuta catches up to him in the blink of an eye, and the protagonist wonders how he can run so fast while holding a sword. In the other battle, Naya tells Choso that he has already won the fight since his blood manipulation technique is useless against him. However, Choso exclaims that Naya must prepare to die because he won't return home unscathed after hurting his little brother. Meanwhile, Itadori continues to dodge Yuta's attacks, who thinks to himself that Itadori is very fast and moves like Maki. Itadori hits Yuta with the car and takes the opportunity to run towards a building, but his entrance is blocked by the same car he threw. When he turns around, Itadori sees Yuta approaching while asking if the protagonist is surprised, as he doesn't seem to be a strong guy. And at that moment, Itadori realizes that Yuta isn't physically strong, but he makes up for it with an enormous amount of cursed energy, the opposite of Itadori. And without giving Itadori more time to think, Yuta goes on the attack and Itadori recalls someone telling him that the higher the level of a sorcerer, the harder it is to read the flow of their energy. And then he realizes that his opponent is truly strong, as cursed energy constantly envelops his body and sword. However, Itadori remembers the promise he made to Nanami and prepares to keep fighting, stating that he can't afford to die just yet. And without bothering to respond to Itadori, Yuta begins to attack with his sword and Itadori can barely dodge the attacks. So he decides that his best option is to run and heads for the highway, jumping over cars and breaking through the windows of one of them. However, Yuta is just as fast as Itadori and appears at his side in an instant, striking him with a sword. However, Itadori managed to repel the attack at the last moment with the knife he took from the van he passed. Yuta wonders where that knife came from and then realizes that Itadori took it from the van. After that, Itadori quickly switched the offensive, attempting to imbue the knife with cursed energy. Just as Gojo had taught him, he managed to block Yuta's next attack, and gradually, the knife began to be infused with cursed energy. However, Yuta evaded the knife and kicked Itadori in the stomach, but despite this, the protagonist positioned himself to repel the next attack Yuta was launching. However, Yuta's attack was so powerful that it managed to destroy Itadori's knife and come. Nevertheless, this didn't deter the protagonist from continuing to fight. He immediately noticed that Yuta's sword was embedded in the ground and kicked it to break it. And immediately after, Itadori advances towards Yuta, ready to attack, but his charge is interrupted by Rika, and at that moment, Yuta tells Rika that he was just having fun and asks her to restrain Itadori while he slowly approaches and without hesitation. Yuta thrusts the sword directly into Itadori's chest and with a look of sadness apologizes to Itadori. Faced with the situation, Sukuna immediately prepares to intervene, but then smiles and decides not to do anything. And if you like part two of this video, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content posted here.